Okay, so how many people does it take to convert a natural gas dryer to a propane dryer? Hmm. Well, you have your trusty dusty. Well, I tell you, I don't like this. <laughs> Not Scott's favorite thing to be doing. But anyway, he's got it torn apart here, following some instructions. And right now, we're just trying to get this piece off and then to get the orifice uh, installed there correctly. So we switched places here. My fingers are skinnier to get down in there to remove the, <laughs> the bolts that we're holding, there, the screws. Yeah, hi honey. So this is where they kind of warned us to be really careful with this part because that's where the igniter is. So we kind of set that down there gently. And I'm just going to remove this orifice here and put the the correct one on here. So it's saying that number 54 we want for propane gas and I don't have my glasses on but I can tell that says 55 so I don't want that one. <laughs> Get the right one on here so this is 54 so we're going to replace that orifice in here and then reconnect all this. So, step by step, follow the directions. So, I double check to make sure I'm putting the right one in here. 54, that's the number. So, I'm just tightening that one down. And then, very carefully reconnect this one. So, there are two different styles on this, on the instructions. It was talking about for the cover dial and so we just changed it over here to LG for propane because it was on NG for natural gas to begin with so we just slid that over here and now we're ready to go reconnected that and we will get the drum back on here and uh, get her hooked up so we're just getting the dryer situation hooked up what yep. have you been up to here? Well, anyways, um, went to the hardware store and got a piece of half inch plywood. We decided we want to be able to remove this if we want to get at the uh, plumbing over here. Mm -hmm. And um, went and got the right um, hose. The other one I got was kind of the wrong fitting on this end. Mm. And the dryer is a 3 8 so I had to get an adapter for that. It's okay. going to go on here. So is that ready to hook up now? Yeah. Okay. So I put the, the adapter on there on the bottom. So. Are we going to be able to get the vent out there and leave that cord? Because what is this cord connected to? Uh, it has to do with the uh, um, outside, outside temperature, uh, temperature for the boiler. For the boiler. Yeah. yeah, it's connected under there somewhere. So, so. what I'm going to do yeah. is I'll, uh, when I cut the sheetrock out, I'll just notch it so the cord will fit and just leave it alone. Okay. And then we can um, put our vent through and connect it there. And mm -hmm. Call it good. Okay, I guess it's the utility some... room. It doesn't have right. to be pretty. Right. Exactly. We'll we'll paint over it and put some. No, cover. we're not going to paint this room. Huh? Just going to leave it alone. or fire tape and leave it alone. Well, I don't think we should paint it because it's well, not right now, be hard but to get it or later. anything. Yeah, maybe someday. You know, it's not going to be a showstopper. No, you know, for we're the just trying inspection. to. We're just trying to get it hooked up and ready to roll. So Scott has it clamped down here, and he just taped it. He went outside to check and make sure that it's fitted on the outside. So we're just going to have to foam around here. It works. We just want to get it in position. So then we can get the uh, washing machine hooked up here next to it. What are you doing? <laughs> oh my goodness. <coughs> Woo! A little bit of dust in there. What is going on in here? Cutting out outlets. Okay, now. Look at that, look at that screw. <laughs> oh it my was goodness. Yeah. Okay, now this is what should not have to happen because person who did the sheetrock in here did not cut out 
that outlet when the sheetrock was hung, nor that one. Wasn't there another one? We had to go to our video archives and picture archives. Oh yeah, now I them. know. See where I drew a yeah. line right there? That's oh, the okay. Address. Yeah, I looked in here the other day and I'm like, wait a minute. Where's the outlet that goes here? Because I know there's supposed to be one right there because we have like a boot dryer thingies. So I mm -hmm. said, okay, we're going to plug those in there. Like there's a method behind this. And then we had a double one here because we're going to have, this is going to be like the atrium for, you know, starter plants and whatever. So we need like heat lamps and stuff. So I need tons of outlets on the side. And I'm looking at this going, where? And Scott's like, oh no, he didn't cut those outlets out. So... So yeah, we went to the video archives to find where, and then we had some pictures and uh, <coughs> and looking at the videos to be able to find out where where those were. So yeah, little things like that end up causing you. Want to get later. something really but, cool on video? What do you? Follow me. What are we? Uh oh. This. What are you up to? It's cooler than cutting out outlets. Oh, is this cooler than this is uh, your wife's design for the win? <laughs> But this is, look, yeah, I yeah, put yeah. Visqueen yeah. up here, we yeah. hung the, no. okay. That's, that's boring. Hey, <laughs> wait, no, this is important because it's keeping, um, it's keeping dust out. No, this what are you is doing? important right here. What are you doing? This. Ooh. It's Copper River King Salmon. Wow. Ooh, that smells wonderful. Ready to be eaten. So how's the vent working? Sucking up all that steam. Right, right, turn it up, turn it up a little bit. Oh wow. What did you do? You marinated that? Yeah, I used the, uh, well, well there's some good. ingredients in there other than the marinade. Uh, it's that Tahoe chili. Oh, Christina, we're still savoring the Tahoe. Wait, is there any more of it in here? Yeah, it's in the, it's in the uh, fridge. Okay. Oh, there's a little bit left. Okay, dude. Check it out, see, we're savoring it. This is good stuff, it's amazing on salmon, and then he doctors it up, putting some other good stuff in there. Wow, that smells this stuff, awesome. This Copper River King, it's like when you're done cooking it, it literally melts in your mouth. It's so soft and tender, whereas like sockeye is a little bit more firm, mm -hmm. uh, and it's very tasty, but the King is so fatty that it just really just melts in your mouth. Like it literally just flakes in your, when you get a, a fork full, it just flakes off. And it's hard okay. to describe, and anybody's never had um, king salmon before. All king salmon's like that, but Cop River King is very oily. So it's just got a lot of body, a lot of flavor. All right, the important question is how long before that's ready? Oh, uh, that's <laughs> probably another two or three minutes on that side. All right. It's ready to rock and roll. There's some quinoa there. Dinner time. Thank you, dear. Already in action. Getting her done. Good shot. Yeah, I did a That's how we're practicing kiss. basketball. <laughs> you get a big kiss? Hmm? You get a kiss for a prize. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, good job. Try it again. Yeah. I almost did it. Look at it. Nice backward shot. So let's see. Okay, Audrey, this is what your son made for dinner tonight. We have a fabulous looking salmon stir fry with some cabbage and carrots and very, very yummy. He is enjoying cooking on the stove. We are loving our appliances. Thank you very much. Just fabulous. Yes. Good job, Daddy. Emma Jean. And hey. What? Come here. Hey, do you want to talk about what you um, did in art class? So, I put these up like layers, and this is like the stuff I do, twilight zone bit I do, and I pretend this is like the dark water in the place, because the beach is not really like that. And I have some urchins, sea stars, barnacles, and... 
my name in the sun set a backward again a backwards again but it's not really it's more time it is a fabulous painting. She's doing us a paint um, art class, but it's all painting this time. So, oh, this is a refrigerator. That's a refrigerator. I think I want my stuff in it. And the best part is this. You have this and this and this and this and that. Really is lovely. And this and this and this and this and this and this. And this. <laughs> And we have everything we like. It is a fabulous new refrigerator, and it's big, and it holds all our stuff. And thank you, Audrey and Jim, and Emma Jean's going to do a swirl for you there. <laughs> we love our appliances. Well, we got the Dura Rock hung a couple days ago. Um, the first eight feet around. So I'm going to go up another uh, two blocks. Kind of on a, like a pyramid angle, up like, actually let me use this to point. So we're going to go up like a pyramid and then stop about half a foot away and then block it. And the same thing here, we'll go up like a pyramid about a half a foot away, just square it off at the top. And then we'll have stone going up that high eventually. And then we got some sheetrock hung up here. And, How'd you guys uh, get that up there? Well, a friend of, a friend of mine suggested that I uh, put some hooks on the side of the scissor lift, and that was brilliant. So I picked up some cheap hooks oh, and just nice. wire tied them to the side there. And, <laughs> um, it worked brilliantly. Yeah. Just went okay. up there and hung them up. Didn't have to use too much muscle power. And mm -hmm. Went nice and smooth. So I, I was going to pick some more sheetrock up and then we got a snowstorm. So. Oh yeah, check this out outside. Not cool. <laughs> <laughs> what are we up to? Eight inches now? This is, uh... I don't know. It's, I would say probably more like ten. Okay, probably. I removed eight inches. It's so uh, Wednesday, what is today? The 4th. Wednesday, April 4th in the evening. So it's been, yeah, coming down all day. I think day. it's basically the last hurrah. Because the, I know weather, the, the so weather much shows it being in the <laughs> low 50s next week. And it's showing that we're going to get some rain Should, uh, next week. But we're going to be in the 50s. I hope so. Like. It's going to warm up. We should get a fire going there, dear. So I got the last uh, little skim coat of uh, mud up there, just really light to kind of get it as smooth as possible because we're not doing a textured look here. Mm -hmm. And so tomorrow I'll sand her down a little bit and take a take a close look at it with a light, make sure I. So you're going to you're going to prime this. We're going to paint it, and then what prime what it, are you yeah. going to do up here because of the. Okay, because Thomas had mentioned something about that in the comments. So yeah, you're going to cock it. And are we putting a strip of this around there as well, or is it just going to be cocked? Uh, well, I'm going to cock it if they want. To, if he's planning on putting some more chlorine up there, I don't know. Okay. I mean, I guess potentially we could if we're trying to. We could put an I, accent be, along. It'll be tricky because the corner pieces. Are oh, oh right. Those are yeah. But okay. If I, when I, once I cock it in there, it'll, it'll be white yeah. cocking. You won't yeah. see the gap. Yeah. Yeah, and then he was also down here trying to fix. We had a crack. I don't know if I if I remembered telling you. It was actually that. a lot more severe than we originally thought. Right, it was a crack in the way jet. around, and then it was actually a piece of plastic actually broke yeah, off when I was yeah. working. Oh, uh, so what are you using here? What is this? Marine tech. Marine tech. Marine tech. Yeah. A marine tech part. So what do you? You have to mix these together. Right. Yeah, equal amount, and mm -hmm. uh, just mix as much as you can use. In a short time because it sets in five minutes. So I guess if it works on a boat, it's going to work in a <laughs> in tub. Is that what? Yeah. I know. It doesn't look very attractive. But anyway, it'll at least plug the hole for now, and then we'll later when we can afford to replace the jet. So was, we have not been able to uh, jacuzzi here in the tub, but uh, hopefully someday soon. Stairs. Daddy Mom. building a fire. <laughs> This is the total cheater method of starting your fire in a wood burning stove. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, so Scott it is putting in those pieces that he had mentioned on the top here for the dirt rock behind the wood stove where we're going to have like all the rock. And so he wanted to cut those pieces at an angle and across the top there, put them in place so it's set up so later when we are doing the rock, it's ready to roll. Bit more progress made in here. Scott finished the the mudding, smoothed all this out up here, and then primed that ceiling so that's better. And then he ran some caulking along all around there and just ran out of caulking, so he's going to have to finish that part. Trying to seal these things up a little bit and then ran some more uh, caulking all the, way, all the way around there as well. The other morning this was uh, it was a little bit of water down here, a little bit of water there, and so we realized that this needed some more caulking. And then he was putting a ton of silicone <laughs> under there because that was still leaking. So it's all these little bits and pieces of things that we're trying to tighten up, but it's time consuming. Another problem we had this week was the drain backing up in the sink. And so Scott dismantled all this under here, trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, he thought maybe it was because it wasn't venting properly, so anyway, he found out that it was venting and he can feel the air coming through, so that was not an issue. Uh, so then he stuck a hose uh, down there and it made it down about 10 feet before it hit some kind of obstruction. So. Um, we don't have a snake, so he's going to go to Anchorage over the weekend. It's Friday evening right now, and uh, he may go tomorrow or Sunday and borrow a snake from his dad so we can set that down. There. So 10 feet down would put it, you know, an obstruction somewhere kind of underneath where the, where the refrigerator is. And so we were looking through all the old pictures and videos back last year when we were before pouring the slab, and so there's quite a bit of... D1 compacted under there, so we're not sure what happened in the process of because it's it's buried way under the slab, so way under there. So anyway, we're not going to freak out too much more about it. We're going to try to <laughs> send a snake down there, see what we can figure out before. Um, hopefully, it's not going to be worse than we think. <laughs> okay, let me just tell you how ecstatic I am to see this. <laughs> Not only is it working, and it works great, we've already tested it out three loads yesterday, but I am just so happy that I do not have to do farm-operated laundry. <laughs> Scott's laughing. Ta-da! And do you see any coin place to put the coins? No! Just, just, I just, you We could have bought one. We could have bought a coin up. No. Oh my goodness. Just let me tell you. Let me tell you. For the past six, count them, six years, I have lived in a fourplex and had to do coin op laundry. So $3 a load, anybody, uh, to the tune of like $50 a month for laundry. Hmm. Yeah. And plus, you have other tenants who, let's see. What did you say yesterday, dear? <laughs> He cracked me up. He, he came in here, <laughs> emptied this, which is what one does after one does laundry, correct? Or they have both our gum in their pockets. They, <laughs> so he, he comes in the other room with a handful of lint, and he's like, look, dear, lint. <laughs> but the joke is that, like, recently in the apartment complex, there was the lint caper who could not properly clean the lint out of the lint collector. <laughs> and so anytime you went to do laundry, there would be a pile of lint there. It's like, oh my gosh, do I have to really clean up after another adult? Oh my. So anyway, we're joking around, but we are just very, very happy to have a laundry room to ourselves. Now it's not totally, you know, finished, of course, but hey, I mean, it's hooked up, it's running. We'll get this all finalized later when we finish out this room, but um, very, very grateful. Something I wanted to point out about the washer and dryer, we were looking for appliances back in November when Lowe's was having that big Black Friday sales, 40% uh, off, and we were looking at all kinds of different models and brands, and lots of bells and whistles. And uh, we decided, well, we really weren't interested in lots of more moving parts that could go wrong, and 
uh, all the different features and I said really I just want something to you know adjust the temperature and just kind of this is the size of the load and press start and we're good to go and that's why we decided to go with these Whirlpool just kind of basic model same thing with the dryer like oh set the timer and what's the temperature Boom, let's go <laughs> so I think we're gonna be happy very very happy with these a few months ago, Costco had these carbon monoxide alarms on sale, so we picked up a couple of those, and Scott set one up in here in the utility room. Saturday, April 7th, and Scott decided to take Imogene with him to go to Anchorage to run a bunch of errands, and I was home alone to do a lot of cleaning and organizing. It was absolutely a glorious day, and I decided to get rid of this uh, shelving unit that was here in the kitchen, and just kind of clean a little bit around here, get some things a little more organized. Uh, it's really tough not being able to use the sink yet, but Scott's coming back with a snake, so <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to figure out what's going on with our drain. I cleaned out this little storage area and put a bunch of backstock items up there, and then I just sealed it off. Good old duct tape, gotta love it. <laughs> it's doing the trick, so that'll kind of keep the dust out of there for now. I'd actually... I originally wanted this ceiling not to drop down so low. I actually wanted it up like at eight feet, but uh, I wasn't here when they were building the box. So anyway, it's fine. There's just a ton more of storage up there than we wanted. I just, I would have preferred to have this up a bit higher and have more headroom up here, but it is what it is and it's working right now. This is a space that's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> the bedroom that houses all. So I moved the storage shelf in here so I could better organize Imogene's things and she can easily um, access those, like her schooling and toys and all that stuff. And then I've been trying to work on organizing all the clothes in the closet area. So a few cages and just so it's easier for Imogene to reach her bins of things and then I can go around the corner and grab my stuff. <laughs> with a flashlight in the morning <laughs> getting ready for work so anyway we're trying to do a little more organization in here well we're kind of back to the drawing board with some paint colors here this is what we chose this uh, tapenade that's in the kitchen right now so we're happy with that but originally this this color here this kangaroo we didn't realize how peach how much of a peach undertone it had to it until it was quite daylight in here and we realized a mm, little too peachy for us and so we realized we want to go with more of a darker um, I don't know that may be too dark maybe too gray so anyway I picked up some other samples that's what we're, we're kind of looking at because we still need that one color that's going to go on all of the main walls throughout the house so now I think we're looking I put this piece of wood here because we're going to have, this is basically going to be the color of the tongue and groove on the ceiling. This is just a piece of the tongue and groove from the loft floor, but it'll be, you know, that's similar pine. Anyway, uh, this antelope color is kind of what we're leaning toward, uh, but then we're concerned it may be too dark. This is called best beige, but that may be a bit too light. What we realize is that in this, especially this main room during the day, it is very light. <laughs> With all these windows, it's very light. So we're not too concerned about going dark. Um, anyway, so we're considering, I mean, because really this main color that we're talking about is going to be on all these walls here. The top of knot is going to be on this main, uh, this north wall. In the living room and then whatever this beige or kind of taupe color would go all the way along here and then up into the loft um, and then that color in the hallway as well we're considering what to do in the arctic entry if we want to have a different color in there or just kind of that you know like a taupe or beige as well the other thing i really like is some type of kind of purple tint or a mauve type color which this is an iris mauve and this one is smoky quartz so I was considering doing the bathroom maybe one wall in one of those colors and maybe in the bedroom as well Imogene would like to have either, either purple or pink so I'm like oh maybe we could do a purple I'm not sure about doing all of her walls in that but maybe one so then we're looking at well if we did one wall 
in maybe this color, then which one of these would be on the other three walls? <laughs> so, um, some decisions to make here for her paint colors because uh, over the next couple of weeks there will be a paint sale at our local building supply and we'd like to be able to just get what we need there rather than having to go back and forth to Anchorage on for paint decisions. So if anybody has some input on that, please let us know.